morning, everyone. Um, my name is San Mbakalo. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces here. Uh, I'm the executive director of African International Trade and Commerce Research, which is an international trade consultancy firm for the African market. Um, basically, we work on four areas, four thematic areas, international trade, research, policy, and invest in African-related projects. We've been around from a, for a while. Uh, we operate from Nigeria, and um, we are so strong advocates of EFCFTA. And um, so thank you very much for having me. Okay, um, thank you very much, um, Yavin, uh, Madam Moderator. And I must commend um, um, the organizers, um, Anne, for putting this together. And I, I congratulate um, Honorable David for making time out to give us an elaborate and setting this stage for us. Let me be clear. And, um, and I think I speak for most people that are under 40 across Africa here. Um, so we are going to change Africa in our time. And AFCFT is that platform that will help us change it. People have said before now, oh, Africa is just the other way around. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm from ECOWAS. ECOWAS has what they call ETLS. And people that negotiated this did it in the boardroom and they did take it to the streets. I'm not in government, I'm in private sector. And I run with numbers. And I say, what is the number telling me? The number says, me trading with my brother in Kenya or my sister in, in Botswana is 16%. I'm saying Africa trading with itself is 16%. But Europe trading with themselves is about, it's far bigger than that. Asia, the same thing. So there is an issue, there is a problem. And as Honorable David has said, Trade is a unifier and also collaborated. Is trade is a unifier. Trade brings people together. So what are we talking about? AFCFTA is not going to be like AFCFTA or any other agreement before. AFCFTA is come, is come to stay. One thing AFCFTA is going to do is going to pin our integration as Africans. And it has numerous benefits. And these numerous benefits are not just people work. Because when we talk, I'm, as a researcher, I have asked people, what is your challenge? trading with Africa. And people say, it's information asymmetric. We don't know where to get these things from. We don't know where to get these commodities from. We don't know who is selling. We don't know how to negotiate. There is no, so many barriers, non tariff barriers. Oh, you must have this document A, you must have this document B. AFCFT is going to abolish all that. AFCFT is going to create a bigger market and integrate Africa. It's going to permit producers to accept cheaper raw materials and intimate goods from other African country, i.e. a Ghanaian will be able to buy products from Botswana. A Botswana will be able to buy products from Namibia, Nairobi. So it's, it's bringing Africa together and it will improve the condition of our regional value chains, integrating us into the global market. And it's also, AFC is also going to give us access to import from other African countries, that is for consumers. We talked about e-commerce. So EFCFT, as a matter of fact, I'm happy when I heard that um, EFC, I mean, uh, e-commerce negotiation has been moved forward to the second phase, uh, to the, um, to the, to the um, phase two of phase three negotiation, which is a fantastic thing. That means our policymakers, which we consider as policy influencers, are, are listening to policy influencers like us that say, this is the number. The number says the young people are majority in e-commerce. They can easily use their phone to buy things. Why not negotiate things that will make it favorable for us? And that is, the, that is what EFCFTA is going to do. EFCFTA will never, and I say this with my heart, <laughs> will never be like any other agreement that has ever happened. I say, oh, Africa, don't take them serious. Let the world watch. Africa is coming, and we are ready to make it happen because we understand what EFCFTA trading with one another will do. It will create employment, not just employment in the paper. It will create currently, right as I speak now, Without EFC, without EFC, I wouldn't be inter, I wouldn't be on this platform. We'll not be having this discussion. And we have several non-official non platforms that we've created. As can speak to Luis. I've not seen Luis face to face, but we have interacted as well as we interact almost every day because we belong, belong to a number of other platforms. The same with a lot of young people. So we're saying, how do we treat it ourselves? And EFCFT is giving us that voice as Africans to make this happen. And that is it. So the number is this. The number is low as, the, as we speak, but the, the prospect is there. We can see the, index, in the, in the indices showing that when we come together to show, we, we improve our 16% 
into African trade and boost it to become even 100%. Because even the World Bank and every other person that says, oh, before now, Africa cannot do this for themselves, are now coming together and say, no, let's watch out for this and we're going to get it right. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. I, it's not that I believe um, what else CFTA will do for the small businesses that we call, in quote, informal. Why do we call them informal? Because they've not gone through the, the process. Most times, the redneck, the bottleneck, this, the difficulty of getting their business is registered and go through the process of documenting it to do trade across border. So that's why we call them informal. What they should be aware now that because they are from a country that is a state party, by the way, um, as um, Louis has rightly pointed out, Europe is still going through the process of even integrating themselves. We can see UK jumping at British, UK jumping out of the union and we have the Brexit and now they realize, oh, we are supposed to be in, oh, we are not supposed to be in. We are coming together. Africa is one and has been fragmented over the years. And we have so many factors fighting against us. What the small business owner or the women that moves, maybe their textile from Nigeria to Benin Republic have to realize now that they don't need to go through a back door or settle anybody or to go, go to any corruption. They don't have free access because of AFCFT, even while the documentation is still ongoing, the processes of ensuring this works is still ongoing. Countries, what countries need to do now is to start ensuring that the national reform align with the regional reform and continental reform, continental framework. So you can't do any reform anymore. It's not allowed because if, it's, if you do it, you're gonna be going against your obligation in the agreement that you signed. Your agreement, there any, any agreement, any, any reform you, you will be carrying out as a country has to align with the region and the continental framework. What do I mean by that? I mean that the small businesses should realize that they are, and they must advocate for that, that their country's reform must align with the regional and continental reform. That makes them able to trade. So as, as, a, as a consultant um, that wants to trade with, that wants to offer his services to a, an Angola company, he knows that now that I need just one documentation to make this happen. So it saves cost and as well as makes it easier. And I agree with this issue. We can't have an AFCFT without having the framework on free movement of person. The, even the, the agreement said free movement of business persons. I think they should take away that business because a tourist can decide to just to travel, not being a business person. So we should also we have to couch that word free movement of business. It has to be in a way whereby a, a, an average person, and that's why this continental passport is important. We talk about security, 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 security issue is everywhere. That was not stop. As a matter of fact, security issue between China and America, but that has not um, um, hindered trade. Let's focus on what brings us together. What brings us together is that trade. If a, a, a small business owner knows that I can do business with a Kenya business owner, without cumbersome, without um, a complex issue, which is not going to be complex, then they go ahead and do it because the FCFC is giving them that platform. If a tech company can collaborate with um, a Nigerian co tech company because of their system. Let them do it. Let them just start doing it. But we know it's a process. Now, what they need to, what we need to do as people is advocacy. We must educate them. We can. It, it's not supposed to just be a one-off education. It's a continuous process. We speak about it. We speak about it. We speak about it by speaking about it and discussing it. We are iron out some. Some, uh, some challenges of understanding, and we've put things straight. We, I think, uh, I, I appreciate that even the FCFTA agreement recognize advocacy and liaising with um, uh, private sector, because businesses don't do, uh, government don't do business, it's private business, that, um, um, private sector that does business. So they, we must, and government must speak to us before they go into any agreement. And the agreement must ensure that it doesn't have national coloration. It must have a regional and continental coloration. By so doing, we'll be able to overcome a lot of obstacles we are talking about. We have already 38 countries ratified and certified that um, ratified and deposited agreement. That is a good thing already. 
So if others have not doing it, they will join us when they start seeing the good the goodness that comes out of it. And by the way, the big the big um, 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 economy in Africa already done it. So even when small countries, small countries and vulnerable states lament that AFC, I mean, uh, COVID-19 has disrupted the economy. AFCFTA is that, pro, that, that, that policy, that platform they need, that will, how am I going to put it, that will help them out of the challenges of COVID-19. is the palliative they need. Yes, yes, it's the palliative they need. So they, they, they have to key into it. Because remember, we're Africans, and Africans look out for one another. We have our brothers keepers, and we must reflect that, and it has always been who we are. We are not violent people. We are not aggressive people. We are people that love to ensure that our community is better. So that is what we are bringing to the ASCFT. Those small island countries or small or, or, or lock, uh, landlocked countries should realize that no country in Africa will want to take advantage of them. Currently, who are they trading with? All these things will be trading on commodity. What has it done for us? Why, why are we still a poverty capital of the world? Because we're not trading ourselves. When we start trading ourselves, you see that poverty will go. Riches will come because we know how not to abuse ourselves. We know how to take care of ourselves. So those countries that have not that are scared of coming on board because they feel they will lose out of the tariff they are getting, they should come to the team and say, look at us, we are small. What are you going to give to us? And I know definitely our big brothers, South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, we look at them and say, yes, we can't take this. We'll exclusively allow you to do this. And by the way, the 30% 30, 30 liberalization is a process. The vulnerable states have about 10 years. The Nigerians, the Kenyan, the South Africa have five years. So what are we scared of? Why are we scared of opening up and doing business with our brothers and sisters? I think let's come on and do this, make this happen. Let's forget about the, all the negativity people are talking, tell, you know, sorry, people are talking, telling, um, talking about us, giving us negative names that we can't do this, make this happen. Let's tell them that we know who we are. We're Africans, we are brothers keepers, and AFCS will work and business will be happy for it. Innovation will come, industrialization will come in Africa to AFCFTA. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Um, so practical as possible. So um, what we should be doing now is um, is businesses looking out for partnership across Africa. You know, before now, you you see businesses looking out for opportunity. Oh, I want to be. I want my partner to come from Europe. Now look out for your partner in 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 Kenya. Look out for partner. Look out partner that will be able to create collaboration. That is one particular cross border partnership we should be looking at. Because without that, you might not necessarily have to travel down to these countries to do things yourself. So the practical thing, you look out for them and you create that collaboration, you create that framework, you create that agreement and start trading. Don't wait for everything to be done before you start trading. Secondly, most of us, you know, Nigerians, we lack education. So we travel most times outside Africa for our education. We should, because of trade, because and we've not talked about it a lot here, trade in services. It's most times, um, even when Louis mentioned insurance, yeah, that is a trade in services. So more of that should happen. So cross-border education. So the practical thing, I look out for university in Kenya. Kenya should look out for university in Nigeria and come because when you do this, you are having that soft power. You understand how the people think and how they do their things. So. Collaboration starts from school. I have my friends at school in the UK, so I have friends that are from all over the world that we're still collaborating in a number of ways. So I need something in Bahrain, I just call my friend up. Let's do that, let's start that. So we also have to also start this certification harmonization. Cross-border certificate and harmonization has to start. We don't need to wait until all the agreement lines are dotted. Since we know we have this thing already, let's start that collaboration. We should also start the organ, and, and that is why I have to commend Anna as well for putting this together. Because what this has done is to also ensure that I can speak to someone and some other African country can. So we need more of these conferences to start happening and exhibitions. So you know what is happening in one country or the other. So we also need, we also need, this is very important, trade support organ institutions to start working. For example, 
I will be reaching out to uh, my, my fellow moderator for us to do maybe a market analysis between Kenya and Nigeria on a particular commodity or product line so that our informations are there. So they always say information, when you look for information in Africa, you don't get it. But we will get it this time around because when we start working together across borders, not looking at our differences, but looking at what will benefit us in a win-win situation, then we'll get it right. So cross borders, chambers of commerce, Abuja Chamber of Commerce, Lami, uh, Nairobi Chamber has to start speaking to themselves. So that brings the, because they already have a platform of where members are already um, there. They, can, they provide their members. They know who their members is. So they can then start doing business across border. These are practical and simple ways to go about it. What will it take? And we don't even have enough African originated e-commerce platform. And one interesting thing about this is that the PASA has is even on board. It intro, uh, the uh, import and export bank has created, given us a platform where the convergence will start coming in. And Africa is also going, there's a lot more things going on in Africa that is fantastic that we can leverage on. We're also going to the digital currency part of things where you don't need this. Um, I have, I have um, um, uh, Chile, I have um, 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 Egyptian pounds, Naira. They will be all gone. So we have collaboration, cross border collaboration one. Let's start going to our schools too. Let's start unifying and harmonizing our certification three. Let the chambers of business support organizations start collaborating for let's business support, which is like ours, like a think tank. Let's start collaborating, doing research together, having conference together, having a um, dialogue together. Then Africa will be better off for it. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. What Africa want is industrialization. What Africa want is not to be tagged as the poverty people capital of the world. What Africa want is to have the better things of life. What Africa want is good health, sound education, be able to do business. What Africa want is to take that destiny and define their own narrative for the good of all. Africa want a collective prosperity. Thank you very much.